I have a bit of a hero complex when it comes to how I like to generally play my protagonists in video games, and I've talked about that on this channel before, but sometimes it does feel good to be bad, especially when you're rewarded for it. Now this might be because the game itself is just about being an evil bitch, or because you're given a moral conundrum and decide to go down the dastardly route. A little while ago we made a video full of our picks of games that give you a little something something for being bad, but you guys came up with plenty of great ideas that we missed. So let's tuck into this one again with your suggestions in the hot seat. I'm Jess from What Culture, and here are 10 video games that reward you for being evil, Commenter Edition. Number 10, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. My favorite RPG of all time, Knights of the Old Republic, not only has a morality system where you can be good or bad, we're talking about the Force, which has a light side and dark side, so what better place to start? I think many of us would agree that one of the best powers in the game is Force Storm. Now, for the uninitiated, KOTOR's force powers are either light or dark side assigned for the most part, and their force point cost will increase if you aren't in their alignment as you try to cast them. That means a light side Jedi will be able to cast Force Storm way less often than a dark side Jedi. Now this does go the other way, so if you're a dark side Jedi, it will cost you more to cast light side powers. But all the cool powers are dark side powers anyway. Drain life, death field, force choke, even just talking people into giving you their stuff and way more money, it's a playground of useful powers and decisions for those who give their protagonist a little edge. In this way, KOTOR is absolutely a game that tempts you with the dark side, as it should since that's narratively accurate in the context of the game and in keeping with the grander Jedi lore. Number 9. Bioshock the menacing and intimidating world of Rapture has very few beings in it that won't want to kill you on sight, and the very few that it does have you can decide to kill on sight, if you want. They're children called little sisters, so you might be asking why on earth you'd want to do that. Well firstly, they're hardly defenseless with a fearsome big daddy at their backs, though if you do manage to get through him, you'll have the choice to harvest or rescue the little sisters. Harvesting kills the child for a large reward of Adam, the precious resource you'll need to acquire plasmids, while saving the little sisters grants half this amount. Good guys may be inclined to save the innocent kids, but you're doing yourself a disservice in the short term, as Adam is the key to being stronger. And though you'll be rewarded for being a nice guy with a teddy bear full of Adam down the track, you may want it now. You'll probably feel guilty about it, especially in the game's final moments, but there is a massive short-term gain in taking out the little ones early on. That is a really evil sentence, let's move on. Number 8. Mass Effect Sometimes being bad isn't just about getting cool powers or more stuff, sometimes it's about being hilarious. And for that, we turn to Renegade Shepard. I'm two out of three games into my second Mass Effect playthrough, and being nice can be a drag. You know what's not a drag? Punching people in the face. And who deserves to be punched in the face? Honestly, half the people you run into in the Mass Effect trilogy. Usually all the things you really want to say and do to the crappiest scum of the universe are gated behind Renegade actions, meaning if you do them, then you'll land yourself with evil points. But if you do want to be bad, that door is fully open to you to punch reporters and pick Morinth over Samara to your heart's content. Sure, you might have a bit of trouble on the war asset front, and if you go all out bad, you might lose a lot of companions, but you'll be hilarious. And isn't that more important? Number 7. Goat Simulator We've tried to mix things up with your suggestions of games that let you be bad and games that make you be bad. Curiously, Goat Simulator is the latter. Commenter Ido Rosenfeld Hakoen said Goat Simulator should be here, and what's a commenter edition if not a vehicle to get your suggestions into a full list? Especially if it means we get to talk about a game that casts you in the role of a troublemaking goat. Goat Simulator is designed to be a mess, with janky physics, a deliberate lack of polish, and often broken animations. But it kind of doesn't matter since you get points for doing everything from headbutting random things and people to destroying the environment. You can't die, so you're basically just headbutting your way through this poor unsuspecting town, licking crap, terrorizing people, and being an all-round nuisance. For points! Number 6. Prototype Shifting from a very silly game to a far more serious one, a lot of you guys really wanted to see Prototype on this list. The 2009 open world action adventure from Radical Entertainment pops you in the shoes of a bad guy from the outset. I mean, your power is to consume others and regain health by absorbing the biomass of your enemies. Or innocent people. Anybody will do. You may have some good guy hesitation about taking out innocents when there are more than enough baddies to keep you souped up, 
but there are real advantages to consuming civilians. Absorbing people in the game worlds can give you new abilities, new memories to further the story, and or the ability to shapeshift into them, which can give you access to places that would otherwise be closed to you. Of course, refusing to do so would result in you killing less people, but the game also lets you use people as human shields and projectiles, so I'm guessing your body count's going back up anyway. Number five, Dragon Age Origins. Dragon Age is absolutely a hero story, but you still have a lot of agency in deciding how you want to act, who you want to befriend, and what kind of person you want to be. That said, there's no traditional morality meter tracking your overall saintliness or dastardliness. Your companions will approve or disapprove of your actions, but that also depends on their perspective on things. Killing a bunch of innocents will just result in losing your companions, which isn't great, but there are still substantial useful avenues in being evil here. It may be immoral to convince the werewolves to slaughter the Dalish, but getting the lichens on side for the final battle is pretty freaking cool. There's also a lot of fun you can have if you aren't trying to be everybody's best friend. Not to mention evil choices often give you extra loot and money, as well as resolving some quests faster. It's a lot easier to just leave that wounded soldier where he is than to help him get back to camp. Anyway, it's not evil, it's just pragmatic. That's what we'll tell ourselves at least. If you want to go full evil, there's always the Darkspawn Chronicles, an entire DLC that puts you in the certainly evil boots of a Darkspawn, aiming to decimate the good guys in an alternate version of history. Playing through it will also add powerful weapons and items to the main campaign. So there you go rewarded for being the champion of evil itself and murdering your mates. Number 4. Tyranny Obsidian Entertainment's 2016 RPG Tyranny is all about being a not-so-great dude. Although I suppose the title probably gave that away. Essentially, Tyranny has you fighting as part of an evil empire. You report to the overlord Kiros, and it's your job to restore order after the world has been conquered. How you do that is up to you. You'll basically be deciding between murderously evil or cleverly calculated in your evilness. There are consequences for both, good and bad, so you'll have to weigh up your options, but no matter what you do, this is a game that's happy for you to go all out bad and make sure you get rewarded for it. There's pragmatically evil, then there's diabolical, and this game lets you go for either. In short, if you don't feel like most games give evil paths enough of a look in, this is the remedy for you. Number 3. Fable you guys left me a lot of comments on the last video asking how on earth I could leave out Fable, so I'm absolutely not going to ignore it here. I mean, it's a game that lets you grow horns the badder you are, so we gotta include it. Many commenters did bring up that you don't really get good rewards for being evil, despite the fact that there are lots of opportunities to be evil. There are pretty equally good rewards whether you run around being a douchebag or practically Jesus. But there are some exceptions to that though, of which one is Scorm's Bow, one of the best weapons in the game. You can only get Scorm's Bow by earning enough evil points through sacrificing followers. Yep, you'll have to recruit henchmen, then kill them off at the Chapel of Scorm at just the right time of day. So not not evil. Additionally, we need to talk about the endings of Fable 2, where you can basically get a statue by sacrificing everybody you love to save a bunch of NPCs, or you can save your family and your dog but the NPCs are done for, or you can get a whole pile of money and everybody dies. I don't know which one you went for, but I reckon those NPCs are probably toast. Number 2. Fallout 3 Another game where you certainly don't have to be evil, but you are rewarded if you want to be, is Fallout 3. You will be racking up good and bad karma as you go in this seminal RPG, and Bethesda appears to assume you want to be heroic, so going the evil route is pretty much always easier, faster, and more rewarding. Blow Megaton Sky High and live like a king at Tenpenny Tower, or grab game-long perks like extra loot and caps for not worrying about people's lives or feelings. A good handful of Fallout games will throw nice rewards your way for siding with what could certainly be considered to be the more unsavory factions, but with enough dosh in your pocket to buy anything you want, you might not care. I mean, why bother with complicated NPC politics when you can just kill them and take their stuff? You can also become a cannibal in like four different Fallout games, and engaging in cannibalism can restore hunger or HP depending on which game you're playing. So that's certainly uh, one way of being rewarded for being evil. Number 1. The Sims On our last video, commenter Xanatron said, Basically, The Sims should be number one. It's a pure evil game. Now, not only is this your list, you're right. So here we are. 
The Sims is an exercise in evil, and I'm not even talking about drowning your Sims in an inescapable pool or trapping them in dungeons to create endless artworks that you can sell for increasingly large amounts of money while almost entirely neglecting them. Okay, maybe I am talking about that second one. But it doesn't stop there. Arguably the easiest way to get rich quick and land yourself a sweet mansion if you aren't using cheats is to romance your way into a mansion baron's home and then kill him off by whatever means you'd prefer. You can assign your sims a kleptomaniac trait so they can steal crap from their friends' homes and there's entire careers and lifelong aspirations dedicated to crime and deviance. Whether in the trait makeup of your sim, the way you treat them as a player, or the role playing of, what if I was just a huge jerk? Not many games let you be as evil for as big of a reward as The Sims. So here we are. And that's it from me. Do let me know down in that comment section if you can think of any other games that reward you for being evil. But otherwise, I've been Jess from What Culture. Thank you so much for hanging out with me as always. If you like, you can come say hi to me on my Twitter account where I'm at Jess McDonald. But make sure you stay tuned to us here for plenty more great content.